Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff and I'm with Tennessee State University. Today in this segment we're going to be talking about titrating your oil feedstock before going through the biodiesel conversion process. So in the biodiesel conversion process you're using a base catalyst and this base catalyst is going to help to break apart that oil and create biodiesel. Now if your oil also has acid in it, some of that base catalyst is going to be utilized to neutralize that acid. So what we want to do is we want to be able to determine how much acid is in our oil feedstock so that we have enough base catalyst remaining to go through the entire biodiesel conversion process. So in this segment we're going to show how to go through the titration process and some of the materials that are needed to do this. So these are the contents of the titration kit that we received with our biodiesel processor. And so it contains the basic items that you need to go about doing the titration process. First of all, we have our uh, protective equipment, our uh, goggles, as well as our gloves. Um, we've also got some chemicals, which includes this ISO heat. So the ISO heat uh, basically has isopropanol, and so that's what we're going to use in the titration process. We've got a uh, phenol phthalene indicator. And so what this indicator is going to do is it's going to allow us to determine when we've neutralized all of the acidity in our oil feedstock. Uh, next, we've got a small scale, and we're going to use that to weigh out the amount of oil feedstock that we're titrating. We've got some uh, syringes that we're going to use to measure out different volumes of the uh, potassium hydroxide solution that we're also going to use along with uh, um, basically your, your average sort of medicine cup that we're going to use to measure out the isopropanol that we're going to use. And then lastly, any sort of a container, uh, preferably glass, uh, that we're going to mix all of the material in and then anything that we can use to, to mix it all together. And so next we're going to go through the actual process where we add the different chemicals and in our indicator and go through the titration process. Okay, so when we start with the titration, we're first going to use uh, our isopropanol. And for that we're going to measure out about 10 milliliters and we're going to use that medicine cup that we had before. Okay, and we'll take that 10 milliliters and pour it directly into our glass bowl. And then following that, we're going to take some of our phenolphthalein indicator and we're going to put two drops into our bowl. And remember, that's going to create a color change that allows us to, to measure uh, when that acidity has been neutralized. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to measure out our um, oil feedstock. So we'll take the scale and we'll put that medicine cup back on there and we'll go ahead and get it teared properly and then We'll take the smaller syringe and what we're going to do is we're going to measure out about a milliliter of oil and that should end up being about 0.8 grams altogether. Okay, now we've got our 0.8 grams and we're going to also pour that into our glass dish along which also has the isopropanol and the phenolphthalein indicator. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our a larger syringe and we're going to take some potassium hydroxide. So the potassium hydroxide is what we're using in the biodiesel conversion process uh, as our base catalyst. And so we're going to take a certain amount of that and we're going to, to measure how much we start with and then we're going to add a certain number of drops until we see that color change and we'll look at the final volume and so we'll know how much of that potassium hydroxide we added. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've added uh, a piece of white paper underneath the glass dish, and that's going to help a little bit with being able to see that color change. Uh, basically, we should, should see a, a color change from the, the yellow that you see that's caused by the oil. Um, it should change into kind of a, a, light, uh, a light pinkish color to a red color. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mix this, and as we're mixing, we're going to slowly add some of that uh, potassium hydroxide solution. And you can see some faint pink um, starting to appear, and it's going to get a little bit darker as we add a little bit more. Uh, basically what we want to do is we want to see that color change, um, and we want the color to kind of stick around for at least 30 seconds, and then um, we're going to call, call, it, uh, call it good. And so I think we're, we're about at that point. Um, you can see that the, the, the material is definitely a, a pinker color, and it's definitely not the, the yellow color that we, that we started with and it looks like it's holding for you know at least 30 seconds so um, we're going to call that neutralized and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, the volume that's remaining and we're going to subtract the initial volume from the final volume to find out how much of the base catalyst we used for that reaction So this is the calculation that's used for determining the free fatty acids that are in the oil feedstock. And you can see the definitions of each item. Uh, T represents the total volume of the potassium hydroxide solution that we used when we were titrating the oil. Uh, B is the volume of the potassium hydroxide solution that was used in the blank. Now, I didn't go over um, the blank, but essentially it's the same thing. Uh, as what we did with the oil titration, except we're not adding oil. We're just using the alcohol itself. Um, the capital M represents the molarity of the potassium hydroxide solution. In our situation, our potassium hydroxide solution was a 0 0.1 molar. Uh, 282 represents the value corresponding to the molecular weight of the oleic acid of the oil in grams and W is the weight of the feedstock sample in grams and so for our situation we were using about 0.8 grams of oil. And then lastly, um, once you go through and calculate the equation you're going to get the percent free fatty acids that can be used to determine um, the amount of potassium hydroxide you're going to need in the biodiesel conversion process. In this table, um, we've got the results from uh, three titrations as well as the blank titration. So we take an average of the amount of potassium hydroxide that was added for the three titrations and we get about 1.56 milliliters of potassium hydroxide. And then what we need to do is we need to subtract the amount of potassium hydroxide that was added in the blank titration. So that's simply 1.56 minus 1, which gives us 0.56 milliliters. Now if we go back to the original calculation and we plug all that information in, first we have to take that 0.56 milliliters and convert it into liters. So that's going to be 5.6 times 10 to the negative 4 liters times 0.1, which is our molarity, times 352.5. And so the 352.5 came from the original 282, which was the molecular weight, divided by the weight of the oil that we used, which was 0.8. And so 282 divided by 0.8 gives us 352.5. So if we take those three values, the 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth, the 0.1, and the 352.5, and we multiply them together, and then we multiply that value by 100, we're going to get the percent free fatty acids that are in our sample. And so that ends up being 1.97% free fatty acids. 
So this last equation shows the amount of potassium hydroxide that needs to be added to 20 gallons of oil to produce biodiesel. So what you need is the percent free fatty acid content of the oil in a decimal form, which we figured out previously, and we multiply that by 1.2 pounds of KOH, which is going to give us the amount of additional potassium hydroxide that we need. So what we also need to do is we need to take that 1.97% free fatty acid and we need to convert it to a decimal form. So in the decimal form, it will be 0 0.0197. And so we take that 0 0.0197, we multiply it by 1.2, and we get 0 0.024. Now the 1.2 that's on the left hand side of the equation is basically the amount of the potassium hydroxide that we need to add to 20 gallons of oil. The 0 0.024 that's on the right side is the additional amount that we need to add in order to make sure that the acid is neutralized so that there's enough remaining uh, base catalyst to react with the oil that's present. So when you add 1.2 plus 0 0.024, you end up with 1.224 pounds of potassium hydroxide. Now depending upon how accurate you want to be, um, you might still just go with 1.2 pounds. Um, obviously for better quality, um, you might go with 1.22 or something like that. But basically this shows the uh, amount of total potassium hydroxide you'll need to add. Now in this case we used a virgin uh, oil and so the acid content was pretty low to begin with. So there's not really a whole lot of difference. Uh, but if you were to use something like a waste oil, uh, something like a waste cooking oil, that's going to have a lot more uh, free fatty acids and that's really um, going to be where uh, this kind of a calculation is, is really important because it's going to add on an, an important amount of potassium hydroxide. Okay, so that's how you go through the titration process to determine the amount of potassium hydroxide that you're going to need to convert 20 gallons of oil into biodiesel. In the next segment, we're going to show the process where we take that potassium hydroxide along with methanol and the oil that we have and make our biodiesel.